So that's pretty crazy. So don't pay someone out when they're worshiping God. You know, that's a pretty harsh point of it. But um, that's not the point of my sermon. The point is, you know, that David was passionate and he was radically worshiping God. He was dancing. He was looking like an idiot. You know, he was getting paid out. He was getting people poke at him and say, what the heck's going on here? But he was passionate for his God. He wasn't ashamed. You know, he says, I'll become even more undignified than this. Because I don't care how I look when I worship my God. I don't care what people think of me. I'm going to worship my God with everything within me. And that's why we sung that song tonight. With everything within us, we're going to worship our God. We're going to proclaim his name. We're going to celebrate him. We're going to get a hold of how good he is. Oh, come on, church. We need to get a hold of how good he is. We need to get this in our lives, that he is our God and he is good, that he is worthy of our praise. Amen? It's so good. You know, he says, I'll become even more humiliated in my own eyes. You know, he had no pride in in that sense when he was doing that. He wasn't prideful. You know, how awesome would it be if we, every Sunday when we came here, rather than just coming in and saying, oh, I'm not really in an energetic mood tonight, or I'm not really in an energetic mood today, so I might just sit during the praise and worship. Um, you know, if you want to sit, that's fine. But in reverence to God, if, if that's some people's expression to God, their most passionate, zealous expression for God, is sitting and just beholding His majesty and just worshipping Him sitting down. Some people are standing up and dancing around and doing um, interpretive dancing or whatever it might be. Um, and whatever you want to do, I mean, that's all good, but do it all your heart. Don't just sit down and say, oh, my legs are hurting. Oh. You know, have some gusto about you. This is our God we're worshipping. You know, and another thing just on worshipping... Let's show God the awe and reverence he deserves. You know, let's, getting, talking to the youth now, let's stop getting our phones out in the middle of worship. You know, seriously, God is worthy of our praise. You know, we need to start reverencing God if we're serious about this. Let's stop talking to our friends when Jesus Christ is standing right in front of you, trying to communicate with you, trying to acknowledge your presence. Let's get serious about this and say, I'm going to give everything. I've heard someone say before, Someone from a church um, just made a comment, and they said, um, you know, I used to be all passionate and crazy and fiery and stuff like that, but I've grown up a bit, and I've matured, and so I'm not, I'm not as crazy as I used to be, and I'm more mature now. And when I heard that, oh, man, that just made my stomach turn a little bit. Because, you know, I don't believe you can grow out of the fire of God. I don't believe you can grow out of the love of God and the passion of God. You know, we all grow and develop in our walk and the way we express our relationship to God. But we should never be lacking in zeal. We should never lack our spiritual fervor. We should keep serving the Lord. Um, I'll bet that some of you guys are probably thinking about talking about all this zeal and stuff and all this passion and this fire and this excitement and stuff. You know what? There's probably some of you guys here that have thought that, oh, man, that used to be me as well. I used to be like that. I used to be all crazy and shouting and yelling. And then I just kind of, I don't know, just settled down a little bit. You know, I'll be honest. That's, that's me. That's what, that's what I'm saying. You know, when I started praying about this, when I started praying about this sermon, immediately God just broke my heart and showed me how, how soft, how cold I've got to him, how soft I've been in my worship, how um, rigid and how chore-like I've been coming to church and, and doing this whole thing and, and being in the band and doing the worship stuff and just going through the motions and God show me, you know, that I've become so cold to him myself. And, you know, compared to how, how hungry I was for him, compared to how much I just wanted to worship all the time, I've let myself slip into singing as a chore and as a duty that I've, I've got to come here, I've got to come to church and do this stuff. You know, and that's, that's so wrong. That's so wrong. It's such an honor to worship God anytime we're worshiping, whether it's in our bedroom, whether it's in front of a million people, whether it's in front of this church. It's such an honor to worship God, whether it's from the audience or on stage. It's, it's always an honor to worship God. And God challenged me about the fire that I used to have, the passion and the zeal that I used to have to desire God, to, to want to spend time with God. And he challenged me so hard and and man, I bet some of you guys are probably thinking the same thing. You know, I used to be so passionate. I used to be so fiery. I used to want to pray. I used to want to spend every, every second of the day just worshiping God, just being in his presence and communing. And maybe you've somehow slipped into a passion. Maybe you've somehow slipped into a pattern of just coming and going through the motions. Maybe you've just slipped into this whole religious spirit where you just see church as another thing you do to, to be good. If I can just get Nath, Nath up, that'd be sweet. You know, maybe you slipped into a, 
idea of that. You know, you have to come to church to be saved and, and you try to, to work for your own salvation and, and do all the good things. And, and maybe, you, maybe that's why you read your Bible because you feel like you're not a good enough Christian if you don't read your Bible. You know, it's not about that. It's about our God who loves us. And that's what God challenged me with. You know, it's about Him. It's about Jesus. It's not about a religion, but it's about God as our Father, God as our friend, God as our King, as our Savior. I want to read Revelations 3.15. This is Jesus speaking to the church of Laodicea. He says, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You know, here we see Jesus is challenging his church, the church of Laodicea. He's saying, you know what? You need to make a decision. You need to make a decision whether you're going to be all out, whether you're going to be hot on fire for God, whether you're going to be sold out your whole life, whether you're going to be cold and just disregard God and just completely shun him off and don't come to church again. You know, Jesus is saying, you know, read this, check this out. If you want to read it, it's Revelation 3.15. He says, I wish you were either one or the other. So he's saying, I wish you were either hot or cold. I'd rather you be cold than you be lukewarm than just be religious than be one of those religious people that do the religious duties because they think they have to and they don't have their hearts in it. You know, he, he doesn't, doesn't do anything for him. I want to challenge some of us here tonight that we need to make that choice. We can't keep going on half and half. Are you going to keep holding on to those few things in your life that you don't want to let go because you don't want to sell out? You don't want to lose some of the things of the world, some of the advantages? Because the world has some advantages. You know, the world has some pleasures that the Christian life, that, that Christ tells us not to, not to indulge in because it will destroy our soul. Are you going to keep holding on to those pleasures, whatever they might be, whatever the things are, the, those secret things in your heart that you might be doing? Are you going to hold on to those? Or is it just that you don't even know Him? That you don't even know who Jesus is, that you don't really have a relationship with him, you've heard of him, you know all about him, but you don't actually know the relationship of Jesus Christ.